are Locked On Cowboys, your daily Dallas Cowboys podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Locked Network, your on. team every day. Welcome back to the Locked On Cowboys podcast presented by Stance. Stance believes that the perfect fit matters more than fitting in. Enjoy the color and comfort of a life less ordinary with Stance. I am Marcus Mosier. He is Landon McCool. And Landon, this is a special, special episode for us because this is episode 1000. We did it, buddy. Yeah, I, I can't believe uh, we made it all the way to 1000 and finally our contract is up uh, and we, we are free of uh, <laughs> the uh, curse that was put upon us. Uh, no, uh, fortunately, would, <laughs> fortunately, we get to continue doing this for another 1000 episode. Hopefully another ten thousand episodes. Uh, we'll see. Uh, we'll, you know, depends. It'll be interesting to see how many uh, Super Bowls the uh, Cowboys will have won. How uh, many? I like the way. I, I by like the next thousand episodes, here, right? There you go. You see? Not if the Cowboys will win a Super Bowl in our next uh, thousand episodes, right? Yeah, I, I thought that was more optimistic than saying something like, "Hopefully, we win a Super Bowl before <laughs> our daughters are hosting this podcast uh, in a couple of years." But uh, yeah, uh, I figured that's a little bit better, more optimistic view. Yeah, we've got a, a special little treat at the end of the show celebrating the 1,000 episodes. But before we get there, we're going to answer your Twitter questions. And we've got some really good Cowboy questions. Um, but I do have a little bit of a fun one here from Corey. He wants to know, Lana, what's your favorite episode ever of the Locked on Cowboys podcast that we've done? Hmm. Man, I don't know. I mean, we've done some after some pretty bad games that have been fun. We've <laughs> done some after some really good games that have been fun. Um. You know, I mean, maybe it's recency bias. I mean, because it, it's I, th- there were a couple after some drafts that were really, really great. The one, the one that we got after uh, the uh, the CD Lamb draft. Yeah, that I was thinking of as well. Like, just how did the NFL let that one happen? I like. Yeah, that, that was pretty exciting. I feel like we had a really good time uh, in the uh, podcast after the New England Patriots game. Right. That, that was the, another one I was thinking. The other one I was actually thinking of, Landon, was 2018, the Saints game. Uh, that they won yeah. on Thursday. We did a show right after that. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, well, they're all good episodes. Let's just. I mean, there's a thousand of them, so it's hard to like kind of parse <laughs> through all of them. And, and frankly, it's. I mean, honestly, that's the thing about doing a thousand of it. It's like it's such a large number that it's like it doesn't really sink in. Like, and and now that I'm actually thinking about individual episodes, like it's so many episodes that we've done and we've covered so many things. That, and it's it's just basically like a like a daily check in with the Cowboys. So it, it's like, what's your favorite Cowboys news day? Is is kind of what the the question is ultimately boiling down to. So yeah, it's uh, there's a lot of fun. We've had a lot of fun on this show. So yeah, uh, yeah I would say even even on the games that we lose, uh, we we you know usually have a good time at least on the pod. Yeah, uh, I agree. I think the CD Lamb one was still my favorite. Probably always Probably. will be my favorite. Yeah, uh, that was a fun. One. Uh, all right, let's get to actual cowboy questions. This one from Abraham. He wants to know uh, what were your thoughts on Corey Clement after rewatching the tape? Is he a long term RB three solution, or do you think the Cowboys need to target a running back? You know, later on in the draft next year. I, I actually think Rico Dowdle is the long term mm. running back three mm. option. I mean, I've really liked everything we've seen from him before he got injured. Um, you know, I, I don't think that the Cowboys should not look at running backs. I mean, you know, they they you got to kind of cycle him in and out to be honest. And uh, so I I like Corey Clement. I think he was, he was, he performed admirably. I mean, he's, he's super useful as a, as a running back three, simply because he gives you some special teams prowess and uh, you know, he can carry the ball. He can, you know, he's not going to get you killed there. Uh, I thought he did a a fine job, especially considering the fact that he hasn't played a ton of snaps over the last few years, but I, I don't know that I'm necessarily, you know, investing or looking at him as a long term solution at the position. I mean, Clement was fine. He's yeah. like the definition of a replacement level running back, right? He comes yeah. in there, he plays special teams, he can catch the ball a little bit, and he'll block with, or he'll get you what's blocked, right? That's not a guy that you're making a priority in free agency or anything like that, right? No, I mean, it's not like, a guy that like, you're build, <laughs> building around, right? Like you would always say, I mean, those guys are literally a dime a dozen. They're on the street, and there's tons of them, and and they're all kinds of different ages and sizes and, and skill sets. So, yeah, I don't, I don't think we necessarily need to uh hold on to with both hands a, a down roster running back it's just you know outside of T- zeke and pollard uh, i don't know that there's anyone on the team that's special enough to like you know 
build your future around necessarily. Yeah. I think a day three pick next year feels right because Maybe, Tony Pollard yeah. is a Tony Pollard is a free agent in 2023. So I mean, <laughs> we could have this conversation, but I'd as much as I love Tony Pollard, I'm not giving him a second contract, right? So maybe you it's 2023. With... I, I wouldn't imagine. No, yeah. no, because you'd, you'd use up the four years and let somebody else sign him and you move on. Right. And you could find guys that have some speed. I don't know if you're going to find a guy in the fourth or fifth round that's quite as dynamic, but that's OK. Uh, maybe maybe even spend a pick a little tiny bit higher if the plan is to move on from both Ezekiel Elliott and Tony Pollard after the 2022 season, but uh, something that not really concerned about going forward. They'll figure it out. Uh, all right. Next question. Uh, this one from at annoyed fan one. Uh, listen, I get it. Uh, is the <laughs> pass rush trio of Randy Gregory, DeMarcus Law, and Micah Parsons the best pass rush trio in the league? Uh, so I wrote down some trios before the show, and you tell Thank me you. if th- that, those three are better than these ones. Yeah. Zadarius Smith, Preston Smith, and Rashawn Gary. I think they're better than them right now. Yes. I, I think, you know, those three guys have a little bit longer history and maybe have got better overall name careers. But I think as far as who's playing better right now, I think our three probably are. Chris Jones, Frank Clark, Melvin Ingram. Did Ingram get hurt? Is no, he Ingram's out? healthy. Ingram's okay. healthy. Um, that's a pretty good trio. That's and they're playing, and they're playing very good football Frank right Clark, now. Right? What? Mostly What's because Frank, or next, mostly because of Chris Jones. Chris right? Jones, yeah, Frank, but Frank Clark's played, played better football lately. Recently. I mean, as yeah. Uh, but yeah, he, he definitely had a very long stretch of not very good football. Uh, you know, I'd say that they're they're in striking distance. They're they're there. They're, they're in close. the same tier. Let's just say, yeah. Aaron Donald, Leonard Floyd, Von Miller. I mean, I think the Cowboys are better than that, right? Yeah, Leonard Floyd has been pretty good. Von Miller has he Don Miller done? He doesn't a ton have a sack yet? yet with the Rams. Yeah, I mean he hasn't really done much yet. I it's think just there's the, a lot of Donald potential is there. so good yeah, that of course. It puts you in the conversation, right? Sure, absolutely. Uh, Chandler Jones, J.J. Watt, and Marcus Golden of the Cardinals. Watt's not playing, so I'm gonna go with the Cowboys. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it at least shows you that the Cowboys are in the conversation, right? They're having one of the best pass rushes in football, and that's kind of incredible considering where we were at at the beginning of the season. Like, think about in week two, Landon, when Demarcus Lawrence was out with a foot injury, Randy Gregory was on the COVID list, and it's, Man. hey, we were relying on Micah Parsons, our linebacker, to play edge, and Dorrance Armstrong and Terrell Basham. It's quite, it's quite impressive. I'm pretty sure that I saw somewhere that – Micah and Micah, Randy and and D Law are all, you know, obviously accounting for snap counts are all in the top twenty, uh, with pass rush win rates. Yeah, and I think are. Randy and Micah are number one and two, if I'm not yep. mistaken. So yeah, I think the way they're playing right now is, you know, it's pretty hard to make an argument against anybody except for them. All right, let's take a quick break so I can tell you guys about on location Super Bowl Fifty Six at SoFi is less than a hundred days away. And On Location, the official hospitality partner of the NFL, is the only place to score a -a once-in-a-lifetime Super Bowl ticket and experience package. Select your exact seats and choose from elite experiences featuring featuring an exclusive pregame celebration with NFL legends, five-star L.A. hotels and food by the great Wolfgang Puck. Visit onlocationexp.com slash SB56 for more information or search Super Bowl on location that is on location exp.com slash super bowl 56 also want to tell you guys about stance founded in 2009 stance apparel represents a radical reinvention of socks underwear and uh, active apparel with a sharp focus on comfort quality and creativity stance brings an atypical aesthetic alongside some of the pop culture's hottest collaborators for the ultimate in style and self-expression because everything you wear should be a direct extension of who you are and how you feel. Stance believes that the perfect fit matters more than fitting in, that those who feel good do good. Go see for yourself. Register for an account at stance.com and get 15% off your first purchase. Use promo code locked on at checkout to apply. Enjoy the color and comfort of a life less ordinary with Stance. All right, let's get to some more questions, Landon. Um, a lot of people want to know about <laughs> – the Cowboys have had 16 players score touchdowns this year, this year which is yeah. the most in the NFL. Yeah. 
Who's your prediction for number 17? Hmm. It almost feels like it has to be a defensive guy, right? I mean, they've run out of offensive guys, right? I mean, has Sean McEwen scored a touchdown yet? Of course he has. What are you, what are you talking about? Of oh, that's right. Has. Of course he has. Yes. What am I talking about? <laughs> uh Corey Clement you know, it, it could be Corey Clement though I do think that you know if Pollard is is practicing today and it sounds like he is Zeke is the it sounds like Zeke is actually healthier uh than he was he's actually a full participant in practice if I'm not mistaken mm-hmm. um so that, that that kind of limits Corey's opportunities there so I kind of would go back to maybe you know has has uh <laughs> Jeremy Spr- uh, Sprinkle, not Pinkston. No, Sprinkle's uh, not scored, scored a touchdown yet. We need, <laughs> yeah. we need a Sprinkle touchdown. We need a Sprinkle touchdown. I mean, honestly, obviously, obviously, the answer everyone's looking for here is Connor McGovern. And that's who I still want it to be because I want Connor Williams to go back to left guard. And we need Connor McGovern, uh, all pro fullback, to come back into the fold uh, and score some tutties and, and, and block some uh, people in the hole. That's, that's, that's what so- I'm looking for. That's funny that you say McGovern because I think the answer that a lot of people want is Micah Parsons, right? They think he's eventually uh, going to score one on defense. Uh, listen, this is a conspiracy theory by me. Are, are you ready for one? I'm putting on my oh, tinfoil hat. Are no, you ready? Here we go. Here we go. Every once in a while, the guys at DallasCowboys.com will put something on the website mm-hmm. that suggests maybe something's going on in practice that could potentially come out in a game, right? I saw an article yesterday by a couple of their beat guys saying, could the Cowboys give Michael Parsons a couple snaps at running back? Uh, he was a five-star running back coming out of high school. He's got experience. It's what not going to happen, favorite, but it, is there a chance that they line favorite, him up on offense? One of my favorite tricks that the guys, and I love the guys at DallasCowboys.com. They do a great job. One of my favorite tricks that they do is the, hey, I, I'm just putting this out there, <laughs> informed uh, informed hy- 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 hypothetical situation, right? Like, Yep. Oh, wouldn't this be crazy if this thing that uh, the coach told me in confidence actually came true? Uh, you saying. know, it's 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 like that. It's so I, you know, look, you, you watch Micah Parsons. Is there anything in your mind that tells you that Micah Parsons couldn't carry the rock? Like the way oh, that yeah. dude I moves, mean, or line uh, him up as a fullback and just sneak him out to the flat? Like what linebacker is going to cover him in the flat? Right? W- what it anyone's seems- going to cover him? <laughs> period. Like, uh, yeah. I so I it's certainly so am not. By the way, we're talking about a linebacker not- yeah. getting snaps in offense. But listen, this is what the Texans did with JJ Watt all those years that he won Defensive Player of the Year. Like, let's just give him a touch or two. Everybody loves it, right? Use your athletes, you know, Why and not? especially in a situation where if you can find a way to kind of scheme them open, so they're not having to, you know rely on skill sets that they don't have like you know trying to get open and that sort of thing i, I think that, that it makes sense i mean so I, yeah I, I, I will I, also I, say this nfl players love it when their coaches do this like years for decades bill belichick did this with linebackers right like mike yeah. Vrabel. how many touchdowns does mike Vrabel have in his career <laughs> because of bill belichick right he's got yeah. the same amount of touchdowns as he does like receptions in the nfl every cap pass he's caught has been a touchdown We've seen this, and players absolutely love it. We saw it with Julius Peppers before. We saw it with J.J. Watt. It would not shock me at all if we do see Parsons play a snap or two on offense before the season. Maybe ends. Trayvon Diggs, too, you know, because that's the other guy. That, well, that Diggs has already about. scored a touchdown this year. We're thinking of guys. Oh, that, yeah, that's right. He doesn't count to this. He's already scored. So He scored but, yeah, I, Along those lines, I wouldn't be surprised if Diggs got some offensive snaps at some yeah. point. Uh, all right. I, I'm just going to read these two questions together because they're absolutely hilarious. All uh, right. This one, one from David, one from Justin. Is the talk of Kellen Moore for a head coaching job now dead? That David asked that. Justin wants to know, should Mike McCarthy consider taking over play calling duties from Kellen Moore? <laughs> uh, I just want to remember, both- we were talking about during the bye week, yeah. the horror that's going to be when the Cowboys lose both of their coordinators to head coaching jobs. Yeah. Now we're talking about whether McCarthy should take over Kellen Moore's job. Uh, I, I'm just going to kill some time and answer both questions with no. <laughs> Uh, I, I agree with you, Kellen. Moore's uh, yeah, I, I, Kellen Moore's fine. I, you know, look, they they they've they've had some spacing issues. They've got some stuff to work out. I still am supremely confident the Cowboys are going to work this out. So yeah. uh, that's that's where I'm at. All right, this question from at Ball from Grace, who's given us a lot of good questions over the years. He wants Absolutely. to know, given the defense has played so well, what are the odds that Kellen Moore? has slow rolled the offense a little bit, not a lot, just a little bit to keep some things in his back pocket for playoff time. This this is a suggestion I've seen 
by a couple folks. And uh, I think that there is some validity to it. I definitely think there are things that they're holding on to in their back pocket for uh, more crunch times. I mean, none of these games, you know, despite the fact that last week's game was a division game, uh, you know, losing it, what it's, it, it's not a playoff game yet. It's not a, 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 a win in your end situation. I mean, they could have lost that game, still won a couple of these final uh, division games and still obviously won the, the division, still have their playoff spot. The, the, the key thing now is that, and, and again, this is going to get into a larger conversation. You know, now that the Cardinals have lost uh, this last week, the Cowboys kind of got put back into a little bit of striking distance for the number one seed. So the question now becomes, what's the Cowboys plan for the next few weeks, right? Like is, is, the idea to secure the NFC East and then rest folks and kind of just understand that the first, the it probably one depends. season battle for it. Yeah. I, I wonder how it might depend on where they are at two weeks from now. Right. Yeah. I, I kind of feel like they, they go into this game definitely to, like, you know, playing to win, not necessarily kind of pulling starters and then see how the rest of the week plays out. Right. And then kind of reevaluate from there. Yes. Well, I also think so that, <laughs> This is their third straight road game, by the way, which is kind of incredible yeah. that they're in a road yeah. stretch. Play this game, and then we've got three games left. Let's Re- reevaluate. Two games at home. And you might have a better idea of what the rest of the NFC looks like, right? Are the yeah. Car- Did the Cardinals lose another game? Did the Packers slip up against uh, – who do they play in the Ravens this week? No one. Um, yeah, well, the Ravens. They play the Ravens, yeah. Yeah, I, I think they'll the play Bucks aren't going to lose a game the rest of the season. I'm just, oh. just telling you right now. So it's just up to the Cowboys, like – do they really want to try to go for like the two or three seats? Does it seed. really matter all that much? Or are you better off making sure that you're hundred percent healthy going into the playoffs? Or do you not want to play the Rams or the 49ers in one of the games? And you're really trying to avoid one of those teams. I think we'll have a better idea after the next two weeks. Yeah. And, and I think it also kind of depends on exactly how the offense comes out against the giants. Right. Because yep. uh, I think that there is something to the idea that, you know, you can't just shut the system. You can't just shut the offense down for the playoffs without it kind of sorting out what it's going through right yep. now first. Yep. So uh, I think that's important as well. Uh, we actually got a little bit of news, Landon, as we're doing this podcast. Uh, good Uh-oh. news. Good news. Let's hear it. I love every, good news. All, all the other news this week has been bad. Ha- right. Happy thousandth episode, everybody. Yeah, We've yeah. got good, good breaking news. What, what are the odds? Let's hear it. Uh, we got good news and then we got great news. Good news is the Cowboys sign. Justin Hamilton to the practice squad, which we like because we think Justin Hamilton is an NFL rotational player. Glad that he's back, right? Me too, yes. Great news is Donovan Wilson has been designated to return from the injured reserve list. I know there was some concern for the Cowboys that maybe he wouldn't be ready to come back this year. The fact that they've designated him to return means that he's ready to start practicing. Not going to play this week, I wouldn't think, but we could maybe see him before the end of the season, which would be absolutely incredible to a defense that already has a lot of depth. Yeah. And you know, the, the one spot that you would still love to see uh, the, them get talent back is obviously at safety. I mean, Donovan Wilson was your most dynamic safety mm-hmm. last year. Uh, you know, he's come into, he came back into a room that suddenly he looked around and there's a lot of dynamic players surrounding him. Uh, but I think that, yeah, he is still one of your you know, two best safeties. Uh, and I think that I think yeah, having him back will be a huge boost to this team. And where he and J. J- Ron Kirsch really help is against teams that use a lot of play action, like the 49ers and the Rams. Like the Rams are going to use George Kittle across the middle, and you need guys that can be athletic and can tackle. Those two guys can do that. I only really feel confident that one guy on your whole defense is athletic enough to keep up with those kind of guys. And it's Kirsch. Having two of them does give you some flexibility. Uh, it's it's great, great news for the Cowboys. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Let's take one more quick break so we can tell you guys about Built Bar. You guys know Built Bar. We yeah. absolutely love Built Bar here. Uh, the holiday season is here. Grab the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar or even better than a candy bar, Built Bar, with filled with so much holiday goodness, rich with great flavor, covered in chocolate, but amazingly low in calorie, sugar, net carbs, and fat but high in protein. You get the best of both worlds, delicious and healthy. There's so many great flavors available right now. You've got double chocolate, cookies and cream, peanut butter, brownie, 
Bill Bar gives you that extra feel you need when you're shopping or when you're watching cowboy games or whatever you do, you're doing. Or you're Bill doing Bar, a thousand episodes of a you're podcast. You're doing a thousand episodes of a podcast. Yes, Bill Bar. <laughs> I don't know how we would be able to do this show without Bill Bar. No, we're not Go to BillBar.com, use promo code LOCK15 and get 15% off your order. Uh, again, BillBar.com, or excuse me, Built.com, use promo code LOCK15. All right, Landon, uh, in honor of our. 1000th episode we had some friends uh offer some congratulations and i have not watched any of these videos but i i think it's appropriate that we play them now what do you say let's do it let's watch them all right here we go here's the first one from dallas cowboys writer david helman now you hear that right there's no way i heard that right a thousand episodes if you've done a thousand episodes, how many NFL running back careers have you outlived at this point? That's incredible. Congrats, guys. Hey, Marcus, Landon, two of my favorite members of Cowboys Twitter. Even if Marcus is always trying to start somebody, we wouldn't have it any other way. Congrats on the success, y'all. Here's to a thousand more. Hell yeah. Uh, David Helmer, <laughs> we love him so much. He's absolutely fantastic. Uh Listen, I take offense when I try to start stuff on, uh, on Twitter. Uh, you know that's not the case. <laughs> why are you taking offense to that? It's uh, it's pretty much your MO. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, I think I think uh, it was great for David to, to send the congrats, and uh, we certainly appreciate it. Yes, we love David Hellman. He's absolutely the best part hey, of Capitalist Twitter. I got, got, uh, got my uh, David Hellman drawn. Uh, there you go. Thanks to Marcus. So, yeah, yes. for sure. Uh, all right. Another friend of the show, it's Mike Fisher, who uh, we've partnered with at uh, Cowboys SI. Uh, just a great, great friend of ours. Uh, here's Fish. Well, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000. Sometimes when I uh, spend time with you guys, 1,000 feels like 100,000. <laughs> and by that, I mean you're very accomplished and polished. That's what I mean. I don't know how you guys stand each other for 1,000. Uh, there, there's no other people could endure one another the way you guys endure one another. But seriously, very proud of uh, what you guys have built. Proud that... Uh, CowboysSI.com is one of the places where we get to house your incredible work. And uh, here's to another 100,000. Fish, out. Uh, Fish. <laughs> Thank you so much, Fish. We uh, we really appreciate all that you've done for us over the over the years. Um, Fish is just absolutely incredible. And he tolerates us, which is... And he nice. tolerates uh, us. That's the most important yeah, part, right? Yeah. <laughs> our, our thousand episodes only seem like 100,000 to him, which uh, good good, good recovery there, Fish. Yeah. Really appreciate that. Uh, next one from our, our guy, Katie Drummond, who I work with uh, over at the USA Today Wire. He runs Cowboys Wire, which is actually the most successful Cowboys website out there. Here's our friend, Katie. Yeah. A thousand? You guys sat in the same video space with each other for a thousand episodes. What is wrong with you? How could you possibly stand talking to each other for a thousand episodes? Do you know who you guys are? There's no possible way anybody could withstand that much of the other person when it's Landon and Marcus. But somehow you did it. So all I got to do is say salute, congratulations. Hope you guys can do a thousand more. Outstanding work. Very proud of you guys. Very, very proud. I'm noticing a theme here. Is how you guys did <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. I, I got to say, uh, after a thousand episodes, uh, I, I have the biggest accomplishment I think this podcast has ever has able, been able to achieve is to render KD uh, speechless for over a minute, <laughs> uh, or at least 30 seconds, however long it took him to get going in that video. The fact that we were able to get render him without speech uh, for that long, I think, is, is very impressive. Thank you, KD, for the salute. Yes. Uh, obviously, we have huge, huge respect for you and, and, and really appreciate it. Yes, please check out uh, Katie at the Cowboys Wire. You can follow him on Twitter at Katie Drummond NFL. Just yeah. absolutely the best. Uh, if you want to like contract stuff, there's absolutely nobody in the world I would trust. He's more the best. And Katie. Uh, all right. This is from a guy who's been on the, the show several times. It's our guy, John Owning. Uh, we've got a little group chat called uh, Locked On Cowboys Podcast, and, Joe, and, and John's part of it. So here's our guy, John. It's a bird. <gasps> no, it's a plane. Wait. 
No, it's the thousandth episode of Locked On Cowboys. Wanted to give a huge congrats to both Marcus Moser and Landon McCool for reaching this incredible milestone. Honestly, can't think of a better duo that I'd rather listen to for all of my Cowboys content, Cowboys podcast, and Cowboys knees. These two are the best, and I just wanted to tell them congrats on making such a big milestone, and I can't wait to listen to the next thousand episodes. John is our guy. He's going to be on the show yeah. several times during draft season to talk about edge prospects. Uh, doing great, great work over at Pro Football Focus. Can't thank John enough. I, I just got to say that I'm realizing that the way that these are being grouped is that these last three, including John, are all former podcast partners of mine. So <laughs> they're all going to speak to how amazing it is that you've been able to tolerate me for a thousand episodes. So, uh, uh, yeah, John, uh, thanks as always. I mean, we, you know, it's, it's, it's always good to see our good buddy. We chat every single day, every so day. Uh, it, it's it's great to it's great to uh, kind of get a congrats from him as well. Another one of our best friends and somebody who I know listens to every single episode. And we cannot thank him enough. Is Joey X? Uh, Joey mm-hmm. uh, podcasted with you at Blogging the Boys, correct? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, again, knows <laughs> knows exactly how difficult it is to survive <laughs> this many uh, episodes with with me as a co-host. Uh, here's Joey, Landon, Marcus, my guys. Congratulations, a thousand episodes. Unbelievable. You guys have built something amazing there at Locked On Cowboys. It's been so awesome to watch. I can't tell you how proud I am of you guys. You guys keep crushing it. I can't wait to see what the next thousand episodes holds. Yeah, Joey is absolutely the best when it comes to like breaking down film and all that kind of stuff. And he's been on the show before, so we'll, yeah. we'll make sure we have him back. Joe, Joey's been getting slow. Uh, he's been really lifting weights. I, and I don't know if that was the uh, video that got distorted, yeah, but uh, he looks really big now. Yeah, so, it's, uh, I'll, was, uh, Joey will post these videos of him working out all the time. It just makes me feel bad because it's like I know I should be in there with him, but uh, Joey's yeah, but, but he would just crush you under one of his Yeah, that's hours, true. He so. would. Uh, Thanks, and Joey. our last we'll, one. We love you, bud. Yeah, we do love Joey. Uh, last one. And then, hey, Marcus, just wanted to come in and say congratulations on your 100th episode. That's a lot of hard work, guys. You've been doing a great job. Celebrate. Have some cake. Hold on a second. A thousand? A thousand? That is insane. A thousand? Like, like in every day for three years, a thousand? Like four times a week for five years, a thousand. This math is messing me up, guys. All kidding aside, a thousand episodes. All the praise you guys get is richly deserved. No offense to some of the other luminaries who have graced you with similar uh, video accolades here, but Locked On Cowboys is the best podcast in our little corner of the world by a sizable margin. Somehow you guys found that elusive chemistry, that alchemy that makes the show special. Not only do you manage to create uh, like engaging content multiple times each week, but you do so with an enviable give and take, in-depth analysis, and good humor, dad jokes. You Pretty much all the boxes are checked. I'm very happy to say that I was there at the beginning. I worked with Landon at Blogging the Boys, and we had Marcus on our show back in like 2015 for what I think was his first podcast appearance. Guys, I'm so thrilled to see where you've taken this and wish you even greater things in the future. Keep up the good work, fellas. Wow, fantastic! That, that was, was great. Friend. That was that was uh, Sean Kirshner, uh, also known as Rab- Rabble Rouser, to many of you guys. Uh, my former, uh, po- one of my, yeah, my former podcast uh, uh, co-host on Blogging the Boys. And is that right, Marcus? Was that your first? Well, uh, and that's what, he doesn't know this, but it was my first uh, appearance, and it's actually the reason why I wanted to get into podcasting. I had so much fun on that show. I believe we were talking about. Uh, what the Cowboys should do at pick number four in that draft. And I made yeah. the case not for a running back. Uh, and I felt so <laughs> passionate. I felt so passionate about it. I'm like, you know what? Let's do a thousand episodes on a podcast about the Cowboys. Oh, oh so. my God. That is like, that's amazing that that was the topic of a conversation is driven the, the, the a thousand podcasts. Started after. a career. Because <laughs> back then I was just doing this for fun. And yeah. That was the very first one. So, Ravel, I thank you so much for everything. We just want to thank you guys all for, for downloading and listening. So we would not do this without you guys. Uh, you, I mean, just our numbers have been incredible lately because you guys have continued to support us. Uh, I, I don't know what else to say. Yeah, I mean, 
this is special, guys. I mean, we, you know, I have done previous podcasts before, and I love all those guys. John and, and Rabble and and Joey are all, you know, still very, very close friends. But, you know, it's it's different when you do it every day. You know, it feels like we're we're checking in with a, a large group of you every single day, and we're having kind of an ongoing conversation, which is just really kind of a cool thing for for us too. So. Uh, yeah, we can't thank y'all enough for 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 listening and downloading and supporting us. Uh, I mean, it really, really means the world to us, and we love doing this. So uh, we're just we're happy to continue going for another thousand and 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 just you know continuing to kind of follow this insane Cowboys train as it careens off the yes. tracks every single year. So thank you guys so much for everything. Yes, thank you so much. We we've got a busy rest of the week here in the Locked On Cowboys podcast. We got a podcast com- tomorrow coming out with Patricia Traina of Locked on Giants. And I promise you that one's going to be fun. Oh, yeah. Considering the uh, the situation the Giants are in right now. Long uh, neck Glennon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I don't know if you saw it, but the, the Giants are thinking about rotating quarterbacks this week. It's oh, fun. Long. That's always good. Yeah, I, can't, I cannot wait to talk to the Patricia about that. In the post-Jason Garrett era, now that we're both in it, uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Friday will be our game preview, so don't miss that. Uh, and maybe Landon will have to do a couple another little bonus episodes like we did last week because people were really really happy that we did those and they were a lot of those fun, are fun so. they were fun yeah, we'll, yeah we we'll should. see if we can do that so uh, right. download the podcast wherever you guys have been downloading we're on YouTube Spotify Apple Podcasts Google Podcasts all that kind of stuff uh, here's to a thousand more episodes we'll see you guys yeah, next man. time.